<laughs> uh, mini symposia. Um, so first up is Felipe Lema. Uh, he's going to talk about geostatistics and Python. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, well, I got to thank the organization for bringing me here. Uh, be having a good time. And uh, well, I'll talk you about uh, where I work, I guess. And well, I can tell you, we do just statistics and we use Python. I'm Felipe Lema, by the way. So, in this presentation specifically, uh, I'll give you a small introduction to what my lab do. Well, then I'll explain with more details and I'll show you, and I'll, I'll talk to you about uh, a couple of projects we're coming along with. So, from what I've heard, most of you know about the 33 miners that got rescued uh, about two years ago. And I was talking to someone in the hall and uh, he said, it, it seems like it's a very important thing, this mine in Chile. Uh, well, it is. Um, for those of you, of you who don't know, uh, we export uh, copper. We have uh, lots of copper in, in my country and uh, it, it is a lot of movement. There's a lot of industry movement, research, and well, that's where our laboratory is born from. Uh, ALGIS stands for Advanced Laboratory for Geostatistical Supercomputing. And for those of you who don't know, geostatistics is a branch of statistics applied for modeling mining resources, which is uh, good for the, for, the, for the copper production because uh, the better the models we produce, the, the more we can export. We can optimize uh, mine planning and have a good risk management. The, the thing about getting a good model is that the more data you get, the, more, the better your model results. But, uh, well, since it's not a problem to get input data, the problem is to process it. Because most um, uh, modeling algorithms uh, require a lot of uh, CPU intensive uh, processes. So that's where we use HPC and supercomputing. We're basically a, uh, a group of engineers. There's a lot of, well, other persons working, but we're almost all engineers. There's uh, a mining engineer. There's a lot of computer science engineers. And, well, in, within that group, we have academics from the University of Chile. We have researchers, such as myself. And we have some students uh, passing by uh, during, during the year. We are a part of the Advanced, Advanced Mining Technology Center, uh, where we share a building with uh, other labs that um, do research based on mining. We have a, a metallurgy laboratory, we have a, a laboratory that develops a self-driving automobile and we all live under the wing of the University of Chile. Our laboratory is funded by public contests that, uh, for projects, and we also do projects with private companies that are interested in, in, in mining modeling. So, uh, one of the projects we're developing, we're finishing actually, is MGEOS, that stands for multivariate Geostatistic software for uh, geostatistical software. Uh, we're this software is basically a prototype, but it's a usable prototype. I mean, it's stable, uh, runs very good, and it is used for exploratory analysis of data and uh, mining modeling. Um, the focus that, well, one of the goals that we wanted to achieve 
with this software is that it would be easy to use for beginners and could be fine-tuned for the experience. Uh, most geologists or uh, people related to the geology know that getting, getting algorithms to work require a lot of parameter input, like, uh, I don't know, 10 lines of very specific parameters. Uh, well, there is other software that does what MGS does, but uh, we focus on multivariate analysis. This meaning, for example, you've got uh, yourself a mine and you have a type of rock, a variable that's a type of rock. So you have, I don't know, 20 types of rock and you like to run experiment for this type of rock and the same experiment from this type of rock. On most software, you will have to uh, program it and run it each time. This software is thought to be uh, iterative and uh, just you, you just select a variable and it will filter out for you, for example. Uh, like I said, it's, one of its goals is to provide a complex and simple interface at the same time. We, for, for one part, we, we don't want to, to give the user a very difficult user interface, and uh, we don't want to limit it too much. Since uh, we get a lot of input data, we have a large model handling, we have to build this application that, uh, in a scalable, that, that uses a scalable code. And for that, well, Python has work as fine for us, but we also have to use C++ code for um, more, for the CPU intensive uh, algorithms. And for that we also use OpenMP. Well, it has to be portable uh, because we work in, in, in Linux, but the end user will use it in Windows. And uh, well, we have to use very optimized code, we have to, we, we run profiles like every week, and uh, well, like I said, Python helps us that in that. Uh, among the tools it provides, uh, it's, it has well basic, if you should call it like that, analysis tools such as histograms, basic statistics, you know, mean, maximum, median, uh, standard deviation, stuff like that data visualization and process data visualization. Data visualization is just, okay, I got 10 probes, I'll watch, I'll see the 10 probes in, in a 3D uh, Mayavi, for example, Mayavi window. But processes, uh, data visualization will include uh, stuff like QQ plot. I don't know, maybe you're familiar with that, you can Google it. PP plot, like the ones that appear on the upper two graphs that appear on the screen. And uh, for example, that one, the lower on the right, it's a process visualization. Uh, it's kind of, <laughs> I, I, I still have a difficulty understanding, but from what I understand is that you select a direction, you select a number of range, and for each range, it calculates the proportions of each uh, category in, for example, type of rock, and uh, its mean. And, well, I was asked to, to build this, and a geologist saw it, oh, I understand this. It's so cool. And, well, that's his stuff. Uh, other of the tools uh, provided are experimental variogram calculation, and uh, variogram modeling. Uh, among its estimation tools, it provides nearest neighbor estimation, inverse distance estimation, Kriging and co Kriging estimation. And for risk management, we provide a turning band simulation. Uh, well, here's a, a picture. It's a funny story that it, among the tools that I've seen, I've never seen. I've never seen, uh, seen one as this one. The thing is, when you do variogram calculations, for those of you who don't know, uh, you have to choose directions. And uh, 
while it was explained to me, the the miner was explaining it with with his hand, and I said, "Oh, would you like to visualize that?" Oh my God, how how come never nobody ever done that? It's so useful, and it was pretty simple to to do using Miami. And from where I heard, they, they like it very much. And well, there's a screen. Uh, for another screen for diagram calculation that provides another 3D visualization that uh, the, the client liked. And uh, here are some uh, time comparisons against GSLIP that would be a direct competitor. Uh, in red, there's times for concrete calculation for GSLIP, and on mustard would be MGS. Uh, these results aren't final because all these results are based on sequential executed code. We tried to parallelize code, but recently we had to do a setback, so I, I can only come up, come up with a sequential code. Another of the projects that we're working on is UFO. UFO stands for unfolding. And what it does, it unfolds. It, for, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, when modeling, uh, well, in this case, mines uh, source resources, there could be, you need to have space continuity. You need to have a, a, a smooth um, uh, model, so to say. And there's a problem because in, in Ch well, in Chile, uh, we have a lot of earthquakes, and uh, that creates uh, a fault, what it's called. And that deforms the original form of the model, of, of, of the mineral, and makes it very difficult to, to estimate. Uh, so a company came to us having this problem, and said, oh, well, there are solutions, but the solutions, the tools that we have are very black box. So they came to us, we came with this idea, okay, we'll, we'll take the model and straight it up. Uh, well, how did we straight up the volume? Uh, what you see on screen is a cross cut in the, in the, in the upper right uh, picture. You see a cross cut of, of the, I don't know if you can see, no, well, uh, well, this cross cut of the model, we select uh, a surface, a, a reference surface, and based on that surf, well, we straighten up that surface, and based on, on that uh, straighten, we, we drag the rest of the volume concordant to the straighted surface. And, well, this is a typical uh, computer science problem, uh, straightening up a surface, and uh, well, there was well there was in discussion that some deformation will be involved. We can't preserve all. We either have to sacrifice areas or uh, angles. And so we asked our client, "Oh, okay, well, which one would you want to re to preserve? Uh, I want the guy. I want a person if he could walk on the 3D model." He would uh, cover the same distance over the model, or over the, the, the original surface, as on the flattened surface. OK, we must preserve distances. Uh, the algorithm, we, the, the way we, we chose to, to get a, a flattened surface, would, uh, the, the, first one, the, the first algorithm uh, pro idea we came up with to, to, to flatten this surface was, okay, we'll use principal component analysis to provide uh, what will the best projection would be. A plain, simple projection like z equals zero. And at, at first, when, when I was anal analyzing this, uh, I thought, well, that sounds like a very bad idea, but given the, con the conditions provided, uh, it's not such a bad idea because the deformations on the mineral are very mild. So using a, pro a simple projection works out. 
And since we're using principal component analysis to find the best surface to, to come up with the best uh, projection, the one that, that keeps the bigger distances, uh, it's very cheap to get. So we got the surface uh, straightened up. How do we drag the rest of the volume? And there's this pseudo algorithm in which for each block of the surface, we get, uh, well, for each block actually, we get the nearest uh, surface block. So, um, for example, uh, well, if we had the original surface with its normal down like this, we want to do this, right? And what we do is, for, it, for example, for, for if we had a block right here and we had a surface block right, right here, it would be this different vector. So what we do is, when we take down to the straighten up surface, we take the same distant vector and uh, just straighten the, that vector up and we translate that uh, block according to, the, to that straighten up vector. Now, a problem will, would occur that the surface discretization wouldn't be dense enough. There will be like uh, a lot of blocks that point to the same surface block when dragging and that would be, uh, that would result in a volume like you will have a, a block, a surface block and a lot of uh, blocks down here and wouldn't, wouldn't be, wouldn't, wouldn't get very good models. So since we have a surface, what we did, what we do uh, is to re-triangulate the original surface and based on the new triangulated surface. Uh, these are some results preliminary results. On the left you can see the original relief uh, seen from, from upwards. And on the right you see the flattened relief. On, well, the upper pictures show the projections from, from, from above. And the lower images show the, uh, both the original surface on the left and the projected uh, surface on, on the right. This, this particular model is, is like a two million blocks. It took five hours to compute and the client is happy with that. Oh my God, I can work with this. I'm so happy. And so we're, we're very satisfied with this project so far. We still need to get some things paralyzed, but it's coming along all right. Uh, there's that. Thank you.